you can look at someone's front wing and you know what springs they're running and stuff like that but the info you really want to know is what they've got inside their dampers the damper you know it's it's not fine tuning like it's it, it on on a normal platform car you can totally get the car completely out of the window or get it into a, turn turn it into a rocket ship knowing what you want from the car knowing what's good for performance what's good for you know driver confidence and comfort um, all play into kind of the conversations that you have at the end of the day. A driver can tell us, hey, it's good over the bumps, or the car feels lazy, or the rear's, rear's rolling over, or I've got no response out of the front. Those kind of things will guide us in dialing in the damper, in which area we're looking in, whether it be compression or rebound, whether it be high speed or low speed, or some other characteristic. The dampers do affect the balance of the car, particularly at the low speed transients like turn in and exit. From braking to initial turn in to how the car is rotating in the middle to when you go to hit the gas on the, on the traction. You want to have a car that when you brake doesn't dive too much in the nose, but also when you do hit the brakes and you trail the brakes in, the nose of the car doesn't pop back up when you try to turn in and jump off the brakes. So if you can control the chassis better and it's, you can keep it where it makes the most downforce, you'll go faster. If you can get more mechanical grip from letting the tires follow the road better, you go faster. So those really are the, in very simplistic terms, what you're after. I think in some ways the best way to learn would be to change something and feel what it does. You know, if you add bump to the front dampers, you in all likely are going to get some extra understeer, but you could feel that. The rebound may add understeer or it may add front grip. At the rear, you add the bump, it's going to turn better, but you might have hurt the rear grip. Uh, rebound, you can keep the rear down on entry, but you almost, maybe if you have too much, you'll hike the rear and it'll feel neutral on the way in. Rebound typically hurts power down. The best thing to do is to play with the adjustments that you have at your disposal and start understanding what it feels like when you make those changes. Often with drivers, you know, we'll do two or three back-to-backs on different things and just see what they say, which will then guide us for, you try three dampers and then they'll guide you for the fourth that might be the optimum. We first have the driver test it, and in the session we don't have much time to do very in-depth analysis because the session's so short. So we would generally get a maximum of a one hour practice session, which means you're going to get four changes in, right? You're going to get a baseline run in four changes, so it's, it's quick. So what we generally do is we have the driver go out and try it, and they give us their feedback on it. Understanding the difference between grip and kind of platform control, um, the sensitivity of the car over bumps, those are kind of three different factors that, that play a pretty big role in the feedback that you're giving. But if we're questioning it, then we go back and between, right, between sessions or overnight, analyze the data. So then what we're looking for in the data is the load variation is minimizing those peaks and bringing them together so that the load is more constant. Um, bringing the minimum loads up so that there's more load on the, each tire and then uh, the, the pitch and heave response of the car. The actual data on the shock dampers or something like that, I don't understand. I don't get it at all. I can't look at it and be like, hey, that's what, what's happening to the car. You need to understand what you want from the car at certain times when it's not doing something you like or when it is doing something you want and how to relate that information to your en engineer. So sometimes it feels good, but then there's just no grip. It you know, means like you're detuning one end so you feel easy to drive, but actually it's not very fast. If you don't feel a little adjustment, make a bigger adjustment so that you start to feel those changes. Uh, that's really important so that as you progress up through, you can help your engineer because you've felt that before. You know what adding front bump damping does versus rear rebound damping. Usually when I come back in after we change something, it has to be short and sweet. I have to tell them exactly what happened in the certain corners, whether it's low speed, high speed, uh, mid speed, wh whatever it may be. And like I said, just try and make it short and sweet so they know what to do instantly and you're not wasting a lot of time. I think the biggest thing is their feedback needs to be accurate, but if you can't tell a difference, say I can't tell a difference, right? And we'll move on. Joseph Newgarden, when we first started working together, like we got to a point where we would lead ourselves down some roads because he thought something was happening. And then we just got to a point where I was like, if we make a change and it doesn't go quicker, we go back. 
and it's just that it was just that simple right if we can do something that either gives the driver a better feel for the car which often dampers shocks can or just ultimately the car goes faster when you put it on that's a good thing you absolutely have to understand what's going on the car you have to understand what changes you're making and why the results are what they are why you, how your feelings relate to the actual physical change that's being made within the damper.